Now this is something I like to see. Greetings and welcome to SmartWatchTix.com. Can you believe it? We're up to version 7 of the Xiaomi Smart Band series. What that means to me is that they've done some continual improvement model after model, kind of patterning after what Apple has done with their basic Apple Watch and uh, incrementally improving a stable and reliable design. And here we are at the Band 7. Inside this little bag is a big watch, big in capabilities. Here it is. Before we get into it, let's tell you how you can get it. Coming to us from Banggood. Now, there's something important to notice. This is the global version. There is a version out that's China only. Don't get it if you don't live in China. There's a bizarre interface between the device and the app. And you have to have it set for the China region in order for the China watch version of the Mi Band 7 to appear. So go for the global. Smartest thing to do is use the link in the show notes because it'll take you directly to this particular page to pick up the global version if you like this one. It's in flash sale right now. Good price. If it falls out of flash by the time you're watching this, check the show notes and I'll have a link for you or a special page you can jump over to. If I don't have it updated, you can look over there and they're constantly updating the best prices for you guys that watch these videos. Here we go. It's a lot going on in this. In fact, there is so much that I've had to put all of the specs on two pages. Usually I'm not a big guy for specs. I kind of whip through them and get on to looking at the thing. But today let's take it a little slower. Global version, important. That means it will work in other regions. It's using the latest Bluetooth 5.2, give you good strong connectivity and low power usage. Tethers to the Mi Fitness Band like these others have been, and that's a tried and true uh, uh, app. Uh, you have, look at this, 38 supported languages. So no matter where you live, you probably have a language uh, supported in this particular watch. Information, your basic call reminders, messages, events, and notifications. There's no speaker uh, or there's no Bluetooth calling in this tiny little band, but you get all the basic notification stuff. In health now, you've got a 24-hour heart rate monitor, 24-hour continuous blood oxygen monitor, sleep monitoring, you know, your breath, uh, inhale, exhale training, a stress monitor part of it. You've got the female cycle management in here and a low heart rate alert. When you get now into the exercise section, this is where they shine. This is really a fitness watch. 120 plus sports mode, four different professional workout analysis. That's a VO2 max, a training load, recovery time, and training effect. If you are into fitness, you know what I just said. You got sports record, distance, step count, calories, all that. Now there's no actual GPS in this band, but you do have all of the uh, fitness activity information um, that you get from the pedometer work. You have always on mode, yeah, for that nice display, camera control, music control, all these are standard features, weather's in here, 100 plus different watch faces you can switch to, it's got a flashlight mode, that's really handy sometimes. Now the Alipay, offline payment, WePay, WeChat payment, that's China pretty much specific unless your country supports that uh, offline payment activity and that's very regional specific technical parameters you've got the three basic sensors an accelerometer a gyroscope sensor and of course your heart rate ppg sensor five atmosphere that's 50 meters underwater waterproof with this one a 1.62 inch amoled screen 192 by 490 pixels with a 16-bit color depth going to be brilliant nice Brightness is up to 500 nits, so should be good outdoors. It's not a 1,000 nit, you know, but it should be viewable outdoors. Battery capacity is there, 15 days standby, 9 days use time, 2 hours charging. So not a super long, month-long kind of a watch, but hey, 2 weeks, that's pretty decent in standby mode. And a magnetic charging coupling, of course, and there's uh, the other information about it as well. So we took it out of the bag, and of course we've got a couple of more things in here. We've got what looks like the charging cable. 
And I do mention this on all the videos, so pardon me if I'm harping on it. The best thing you can do is to unpack this and charge your device up. First off, charge it full. Make sure you get it nice and... Whoa, it's rolling all the way over there. Make sure you get it nice and fully charged before you dive in and start using it. You'll get longer battery life that way. Just do it. It's a magnetic couple, funny looking thing, very unique, so be careful with this one. It attaches there, it's super strong, definitely uh, going to hold on to the watch. Uh, and of course it just plugs into the USB connector on the other end. And we've got a book, an entire book in here. You want to learn how many to say 38 languages? <laughs> Study the book. The Smart Band 7 User Manual. Hoping English is the first one. You jump in. You've got all of the different info um, here. The different languages supported. You see yours and your manual will work. Otherwise, watch for it here. We're going to page quickly through the manual. That's the best way to always know you got access to a manual is come here and check the beginning of the videos. Look, it'll pop out of the band, which means you can change the casing if you want to. No, I don't know if it's the same size as the 65432 or 1, but um, that's something to be learned, I guess. Here's where you put it on. There's the QR code for downloading um, the app, the uh, Mi Band, right? Xiaomi smart band 7 connectivity to the app and some simple sliding concepts and again they like pushing it in and out and charging it and that's it it really doesn't go into the apps or anything else now we switch to different languages and that's the whole book that comes with it all righty we are going to follow the the guidance i've been giving and charge it up and <laughs> we'll check it out for you there we go. Doesn't that look nice? That is the always on screen. It's a subset of this one, which has got all kinds of goodies on it. And this whole watch face was downloaded from the uh, tethering app from the server that supports hundreds of these different watch faces. Before we jump into this uh, band seven, I want to take a moment and let you know that it is practically identical to the band six and i've got a great review up on the band six already that covers all kinds of things including the accuracy of the pedometer compared to the top of the line flagship fitbit the fitbit sense and that these bands have a better track record at step count than the other ones do, than the Fitbits do. And it explains exactly why. So be sure you watch the review on the Mi Smart Band 6, okay? We are today reviewing the Smart Band 7, and these are the differences. The screen is slightly bigger in the new version. The resolution is a little bit sharper, okay? A little bit more pixels in here. It's tiny bit brighter, not much, but a little bit brighter. The sensors are all basically the same, except blood oxygen is continuous monitoring now on the band 7, and it was just incremental on the, on the band 6. Battery is a little bit larger, but because the screen itself is a little larger, the playoff is just a tiny bit longer battery life. I point to these two because these are the global ones. If you're outside of China, inside China, they have NFC uh, chips in them. And, uh, you know, for banking and whatnot, it only works in China. And that eats up a little bit more battery. So you see the, uh, the, the length of the battery is shorter in the China version than it is in the global, which is interesting. Same time to charge. Uh, there's been a significant increase in the uh, fitness modes, 120 of them now as opposed to 30. So they've really ramped it up to make it a full-fledged fitness watch. Slightly heavier, slightly different size, same waterproof. Bluetooth is a little bit better, a little bit better connectivity and uh, stronger, uh, longer distance probably. And of course, your operating systems are the same. So let's walk through this one fairly quickly and watch the extensive review that we've already got up on the Band 6 if you want to know more. When you swipe it down, you got notifications. Here, you get all kinds of different things, and we'll walk through these, and they go on and on and on and on until there's more. When you tap that, 
you get even more. Now, all of these are configurable from the uh, tethering app. Oh, yeah, and that is the really big, big difference. The tethering app has changed, not just for this band, but for the six, the five, the four. All of the previous ones have been shifted to this new Zep Life app, and we're going to look at that app as well. Sliding over here, it's different when it's out of the box. I've configured it to my liking. I've got my um, step count, calories burned information here. It doesn't slide up or down, just right there. Come over again. I'm into heart rate now. It shows where I currently am. If I hit that button down there, it will uh, give me an instantaneous heart rate, which I'm not going to waste your time on. Blood oxygen, the same thing here. Now, both... Heart rate and blood oxygen are working in the background to do continuous readings. And um, this is instantaneous if you want to take a quick reading. This also gives you your heart rate as well as your, um, come back here, as well as your blood oxygen, okay? No blood pressure in these bands. It's doing blood oxygen and heart rate. Come over here. This is my stress level. It says it's mild. Shows you the chart on here. 50 is about even so not a lot going on in stress i set this up then that i can go into my activities and the most recently used ones are here walking running and then more takes you into that whole long list of different activities and then all workouts oh my goodness takes you into sets look at this indoor workouts there's 24 of them and they're just on and on and on so whatever your thing is, it's going to be here and it's been fine-tuned to give you the best accuracy of the workout um, feedback when you use those particular ones. So this is an entire card that subsets goes into it deeper. Uh, come over here. I've got a breathing exercise. If I check that, it'll turn it on. I can keep calm, concentrate on breathing, and then it invites me to inhale and exhale, and it vibrates when it gets to those limits. At the exhale, there was a tiny vibration, gets down, and it'll vibrate to inhale. Great for after your workout when you're trying to kind of relax and recover. Here's temperature in whatever city or location you set. This is Shenzhen, China. I've set it for Fahrenheit, but you can do centigrade. Again, in this mode, you don't get much more than what you see right here. Basically, your high, your low, and your current temperature. But in the full-on weather forecast, you can go much deeper. So those are the different cards, selectable, settable, organizable. Now, come back in here. Let's start at the top. This is that personal activity that we have where you get more details on your daily activity activity. There's that chart of sorts that we, we saw. But look, here's the calories burned during each hour of the day. Here's the step count, the amount of sessions that you actually got up and moved. Uh, all of that stuff is there. The description explains what each of these are in detail. So you can read these when you get your uh, band in case you don't quite fully understand what it's doing. Medium to high intensity, how it calculates all of that. And that information is right here under the personal activity. Heart rate, we already looked at. Blood oxygen, we saw that too. And stress, we made cards for those. Breathing as well. Last night's sleep time now. I don't have that a card for that. Or I could add it if I wanted to. Uh, here I have seven and a half hours total. And there's the breakdown, which you'll see, of course, in the app from um, awake times, REM, uh, light sleep, deep sleep. Here's the duration and the the amount of hours and time you spent in each of those. And you can go into settings from here for high accuracy if you want to. It's enabled. And uh, you can also do a sleep breathing monitoring. And all of these will take uh, extra battery. It's a trade-off. But if you want that kind of uh, analysis, it's available for you. Again, description, you can get deeper information on that. Here's the workouts. We already looked at those and explained how they work. We got a card on those. Here's your history now. I do have a history from the band of a, a quick walk. This was about an eight and a half minute walk. The average speeds, number of steps, all of this kind of data is accumulated here on the uh, band and, of course, transferred over to the app as soon as you tether. You can throw it away or you can hold it on here if you want to. So you have your workouts, your history of your workouts. And then here's um, 
a training load, and this is a high intensity for the last seven days, and there's insufficient data because I haven't um, done it for seven days yet. The uh, PI, P-A-I, that comes next also requires it uh, for seven days. Read up on that. This is how you can get a continuous check on your health and workout information. Here's the weather where you can set that up, alarm, stopwatch as well, and timers. You've got a flashlight mode that will make the screen really bright. So if you need a flashlight at night, get up out of bed and make your way to the bathroom, you can do that right there. And then you got overall settings. We'll come back to that. And then more. And these are the things, and you can put these in the secondary uh, part here, or you can keep them back in the primary. You can move all that around. A music player, find your phone. Go into silent mode, events. I have no idea what Pomodoro timer is. That's in here as well. And the last one is your female health, which tells you basically where you are in your cycle. Settings, let's come back here. I got watch faces. So let's take a moment and show you some of the different watch faces. That's the custom one that I put in. You have something like this. Now this is small, but if you touch it, it'll get full. You have a, a, a nice graphic kind there. These are all digital. We also have an analog uh, face like this. Here's an interesting analog one that I want sometimes use uh, when I just want to have a simple face like that. It has your step count up there, your UV index for outdoors down there, and I think these are all settable as well if you want to, and then a digital, uh, excuse me, an analog watch face, and in the always on mode, it goes just to that face. So that's pretty cool. Your little digital band looks like an analog watch until you activate it, and then you can do whatever you want to with it. So that was all coming to us from settings down here and the watch faces and what else does it say your time format date format you can change that however you like it to look you've got overall brightness you got screen on duration which i have set for 15 seconds down here but you can go as low as five here's where you can turn on or off the always on i have it set on a schedule but you can do it all day or smart it will recognize when it should turn off like if you're asleep and do that uh twist your wrist to raise uh your screen always on this way you can just leave it completely lit not just in the always on time mode but the screen would be forced always on lots and lots of capabilities Here's the screen on whenever there's a notification. It'll make sure it lights up the screen. You got do not disturb. You can literally lock the screen. A battery saver mode. Preferences. Preferences look like vibration, band language, whatever you want. Follow the uh, watch, it's, uh, your phone, or install or switch it to any of these available uh, languages. And there's a bunch of them in here. We've got screen wake up to tap the screen which i have set anyway and um, press and hold once enabled press the watch face to hold to enter the watch face editing page which it's on right now and that's a simple way to get to editing your watch faces oops out too far let's see preferences system system is just basic stuff you're about um, your legal documents restart the watch shut down basically that's how you turn it off and then uh, factory restore if you want to completely wipe everything off the watch so we've covered all of that battery saver talks about when you enable this mode the band records the steps and basic sleep information so that's how you can get your longest battery life from that um particular battery mode and then this one here is uh, the different workouts that you can have it automatically detect I do a lot of walking so I'm going to set the walkout mode as the one that it will detect when I'm doing it that way I don't have to enter it myself and that's pretty much everything in overall settings more we've looked at all of this stuff and again these can all be changed from the app which we're going to take a look at right now the Zep Life app, and here it is in the Google Play Store, is a replacement to the Me Fit. If you try to find Me Fit, it's immediately going to take you here. Me Fit or Me Space Fit does not exist anymore. Any of you guys with watches that are on that app will be upgraded or shifted to Zep Life. So good to know. Uh, once you're 
have the app you're going to download it to your phone and then open it you go through you set up an account you get yourself registered you do the standard stuff and then you get into this page here of course you got to tether to your uh, particular band or watch as well skipping all of that for now so we can just get into the data you have all these different sections and you see we've got these arrows in here to uh, go deeper into them in terms of steps you get your cumulative your daily hourly steps on a chart and today's activity broken down here and you can view all if you want to look this is where it's detecting slow walking light activity and so forth you have uh, goals that you're attempting to reach and it'll show you how many you've done this week's steps last week's and again I just put this thing on yesterday so got a couple of days worth of information on it for here uh, the, the current month and week and so forth they're all broken down directly on the app or you can go across the top and you can send this out if you want to and share it a lot of information there last night's sleep information here we go we saw this on the band itself the uh, band 7 which is the one that we're tethered with this app right now you got a sleep score which takes a lot of stuff into consideration then you've got charts that are showing different colors representing different parts of your sleep where you've got deep purple uh, light purple green for REM your dream state and yellow is uh, when you were awake so had a lot of nice dreams last night which was fun if you have any naps it'll detect them and you can put them in here um, your sleep breath quality now this is something really new it's in beta right now and this is how well your breath was overnight and it looks like I did pretty good it gives you a relationship between breathing and sleeping how do you uh, improve your quality and some of the things that you can do and then these are the references and you can report data issues to them because it is after all in beta but they're giving you access to it directly deep sleep time is short that's an assessment of last night's sleep for me I should uh, have a, lot, a little bit more deep sleep <laughs> I tell you you can't get away from any of this stuff now it tells me I'm 17 minutes late in falling to sleep I'm so glad I'm not a high school kid anymore with my parents telling me go to bed um, I woke up as usual though a total sleep times usual and 22 minutes reduced from deep sleep from the expectation of what I should have if you're really trying to fine-tune your sleep this is uh, the band the app for doing that compared with other users you get these charts that show kind of a bell curve and where you are on it and uh, that's good information as well weekly monthly yearly export all of that stuff is here too now we get into heart rate here's our uh, cumulative 24 hour heart rate you can see at night it was resting during the day it's a little bit higher and I'm about halfway through the day I can come in here and um, soothing warm up fat burn time these are all of the different zones I like to spend a lot of time soothing uh, maximum heart rate and so forth and the continuous heart rate information these are your manually measured results now that you can uh, get when you take a reading on the watch directly as opposed to the sequential ones that are being taken automatically I can tap anywhere here it'll show you the time and the value which is nice and that we're in the continuous heart rate zone area there which is primarily these two soothing and warm-up with nothing really yet in aerobic I need to do some good aerobic uh, workout pie I got one I earned one so far pi uh, is something you got to study you can earn pi by doing activities it's a seven day goal you try to achieve and then you want to keep it up and improve your score to try to get above a hundred if you can when you're ready you go into it and it tells you how you're doing what your required total is lot of information on that if you're familiar with any of the me band um, activity from the past uh, you're you're familiar with pi and uh, it's the same thing it's just now on this band I've had a couple of different workouts couple of different walks 
One of them I initiated from the workout tab here. We'll get that in a second. And the other one I initiated on the band. Now, interestingly, they're both little walks. When I do it from the phone, I can invoke GPS and get a GPS track. But if I do the same thing but start it on the band, even though I'm paired to the phone to, to keep track of the information, it does not initiate the GPS to complete the track. I don't know if that's a glitch or that's exactly what it's supposed to be, but it, that's the way it's working. You have your female uh, health predictive information in here too, and you can get into the full chart. It shows you today, it shows you when it started, the different parts of the cycle overall, your predictions. You can edit it. You can change it. A uh, lot of capability in here. You've got overall settings up here as well where you can uh, put in the strategic information you need to calculate that correctly. And, of course, it's going to tell you where you are at this point. You have weight and body score that you can put into this. You have workout status, your VO2 max and workout load. Way advanced stuff. I don't go there. Those of you who are definitely deep into fitness, uh, I'm sure this will be very valuable for you. And it's all in this basic uh, lower section here of all of the different cards on the home page. Now, like I said, when you go to workout, you enter an area now where you can select an activity and you can begin and you can go through and uh, do it. It will pull in the heart rate information from your uh, band as long as you're tethered. See, there's my live heart rate right now. And it'll combine it with everything else that it's getting as you're moving through space, carrying your phone with you. Uh, if you don't have your phone with you, once you fall out of range, you're going to lose that capability once, when you've initiated it from here. So let me show you. When I go in here, this is the uh, no GPS uh, track available because I started this one from the watch, but I did have the phone with me so that it could accumulate this data. I got heart rate. I was able to get my overall speed information, heart rate zones, cadence, stride. I, I went inside and I went out and I came back inside and I went out and I did that a couple of times. So there's the stopping and the starting and your overall training effect. Yeah, no effect. It was just a demo. But this is what happens when you initiate a walk or a run or something from the band. When you initiate it from in here now, you get the GPS track. And this is all around my house. So it's really zoomed in close. It even has its own watermark logo on here. And you're getting data that looks like this. There's my speed and heart rate and heart zones. Same kind of thing. Now I have altitude as well. And it's got gradients. And it really is accurate. This is the second story. I walked around up here. Then I went down the stairs and walked around on the first floor. And it shows even that, uh, that slight change in altitude. So that was fun. Cadence and stride. All of that data is here when you initiate it from within the app. So if you don't mind carrying your phone with you and using it for your workouts, highly recommend that you initiate your workouts from the workout tab in the app. You get more data. You won't get more friends, but you get more data. Friends is where you can put in friends, scan QR codes, add them, you know, compete with them, all of that stuff. And then overall profile here is where you have your device. You can add devices. I'm at 53% now. I charged it all the way up and about two days ago. Uh, I've been running it down a lot, using it a lot, working with it a lot. So it's going faster than I would expect. Looks like I'll get about four days of use out of it. But honestly, once I settle down and use it on a normal basis, um, have it configured the way I like it, it probably will get a lot longer life. And if I took off all of this incremental monitoring of heart rate and blood oxygen and bright screen and always on display and so forth, I could get a lot, lot longer life. So when you're talking 15 days life, it's at its bare minimum. I'm looking at maybe four days of fully loaded. But you got all these other things. Here's the store where you can go in and choose your different watch faces uh, that you'd like to download. Those are all available. This is where you manage the ones that you've already got, the stock ones that are in here, the ones that we've uh, you download that you can uh, um, add to your watch back and forth if you want to. Behavioral tagging now. This is wild. This is where you can put in something that describes what you are doing, I guess. Little icons for behavior in your workouts and daily activities. 
You can add accounts, smart analysis, your sleep quality and your body type analysis are, are uh, selected on here, and your overall settings for your units, metric or imperial, and so forth. Check for updates about and sign out of your account in the app, and of course you can disconnect your device if you want to as well when you get in here where it shows all of the stuff that's related to this particular band. Here I am. There's the store again, notifications and reminders. This is where you can modify your health monitoring. Your all-day heart rate can be as frequently as every minute. Oh, that's going to eat up a lot of battery. I set mine for every 10 minutes. You can do smart monitoring, so it'll monitor more frequently when you're, uh, you're doing activities. In fact, I'm going to switch to that and try that, see if I get better battery life. I don't need to be monitoring every minute while I'm sleeping, you know. It's crazy. Uh, you can set your high heart rate, your low heart rate if you want to, your sleep. You can do the high accuracy sleep monitoring, and there's that breath thing. We saw that on the band itself. Your stress, relaxation, reminders, your overall continuous blood monitoring now with the band 7. And you can set a reminder for a low um, blood oxygen. I haven't experienced this yet, and I don't know if it would work, that it would vibrate if you, if you go below your reading at night while you're asleep, and it would wake you up from sleep apnea. We have reviewed some bands like that, and go to smartwatchticks.com and look in the playlists for ECG plus PPG or sleep uh, monitoring sleep apnea playlists, and you can see bands that can do that kind of thing. This, I'm not sure, and I'm not sure how often it's actually monitoring your blood oxygen. In order to catch sleep apnea, it has to be pretty frequent, like at least once every 10 minutes, if not every 5 or 1. But that's available um, as an option um, if you're interested in that. That's all health monitoring, your band settings. This is display, vibration, do not disturb. You can set a password if you take it off. The watch will lock up and nobody can get in it if they take it. Um, your display settings and the details that you can go into on that. These will be uh, all of the things that we saw in the cards. Remember that you can slide through. Oh, sorry, the apps when you're going down. And then here's more down here. So if you don't plan on, let's say, using the alarms very often, I can put that down into more and... I go all the way down to bottoms, hit the more button, and then it would appear here. Like, I don't use music controls. I don't really find my phone that often. So I put a lot of that stuff down here. You can have just one or two things here and everything in more. It's however you want to set it up. And you got to have save, though, if you want to make those changes. So that's the um, band settings for the display settings. And the shortcuts now are the cards that you go through when you slide across the screen. You have access to... Whatever ones you want to set up in whatever order you want them. I have activity, heart rate, blood oxygen, and so forth. But you can also bring, bring these up there if you want them to appear. The more, of course, the more you got to swipe to go all the way around. So up to you how many you want to actually display. Uh, that's a configuration I'm happy with. Languages, night mode now. This is where you uh, can make sure that the brightness goes down as low as possible. And you can set a start and stop time if you want to to schedule it. Or you can turn that off or set it to go on and off with sunset in your area. Yep. And that way when you're indoors, it'll be dim without you having to do anything about it. Because honestly, on the band itself, it's not easy to get to the brightness control. You got to drill down to settings, go to display, and then get to brightness just to change it. I wish it was a lot easier. So set it up like the way you like it in your overall band settings here. Are we done? Of course not. That's just here. Here's where you can integrate it with your calendar in your phone and push the calendar events, apparently, to your band. Take a look at those. These are different event reminders that you can set up separately from the calendar. There's alarms you can set. And then there's weather where you can set up up to five different locations that you can um, check on, on the weather uh, instantly. Find your band, making it discoverable, active heart rate sharing. This will allow you to share your heart rate with others, apparently. Run it in the background. Unlock the screen. This is uh, so you can use the band to unlock your locked phone screen just by being in proximity. So if your phone is stolen, nobody can get in it. But if you're close by, you don't have to constantly do your passwords and stuff. 
Okay, and this is where you would unpair it. You can add a different band to the app as well. All kinds of things. Your friends, your store, your behavior. We talked all about that stuff. So that's pretty much it for the app. So once again now, this particular band is the Mi Smart Band 7. Mm -hmm. And it is available from Banggood. These guys sent it out for us to review. Really appreciate them. Um, they wanted to send the original China version. And I told them, hold off. There's a real complication. And I tell you the same thing. Make sure you're buying the global version if you don't live in China. If you do live in China, that's great. You can use either one. And that one has NFC. But outside of China, if you get the China version, you have to register it as if you're in China by switching the... This, it's really crazy. We tried to do that on some other bands and watches, and it just doesn't work. Also, you only have English and Chinese as the languages available, and lots of other limitations, like Google Maps isn't working. Just don't, don't go there. Make sure you get the global version of the Xiaomi Mi Smart Band 7, and you'll be in good shape. So we're looking at about $60 or $55. That's not bad at all. It's in flash right now. It may go up if it does. Check the show notes for a, a discount coupon. We'll try to keep it at a low rate for you. But with everything it's got going for it, uh, unless you have the Band 6, this would be a decent upgrade to get into the latest technology, especially with continuous heart rate, continuous blood oxygen, and a really bright, uh, large screen. Thanks for watching, gang. We'll see you again soon.